Today's question is, should plant medicines be legalized and regulated? I'm Kat Courtney. I'm the CEO of Plant Medicine People. Thank you for joining me for this important topic today. There's a lot of movement around legalizing plants like ayahuasca, psilocybin, Cannabis was just recently named by the federal government in the United States to be rescheduled from Schedule 1, which means it has zero medicinal value and is essentially the same as a narcotic like meth, uh, to Schedule 3, which means that now the government is acknowledging cannabis has healing properties, medicinal properties, but needs to be re heavily regulated. Another medicine that is Schedule 3 is ketamine. Uh, just for a point of reference. So is this really the most beneficial way of allowing human beings to access safely and legally plant medicines? Well, it's exciting that we're in a, a part of our journey where this is becoming more and more of a reality, a possibility. Um, states like Colorado have uh, decriminalized psilocybin mushrooms. We know that the cannabis movement is loud and proud and has been for some time across different states and now on a federal level. But is legalizing and regulating really the path to freedom? That's kind of my core question because on in, in an initial reaction, most of us, if we think, oh, plant medicine if they're legal, that means they're accessible to all of us, that there's a sense of equality. And unfortunately, that is not the case. What legal means is regulated, which means that the government, whatever government that is, state, local, federal, in any country, the government gets to say who, when, where, and how the medicine is, is accessible. So in the case of like, say, ketamine, it is doctor controlled. Yeah, that makes sense for ketamine because there isn't really a history of shamanic sacred ceremonies with ketamine, but there is for ayahuasca. So if ayahuasca gets to go down any path of legalization, what will likely happen is that ayahuasca herself won't be legal. A synthetic version of DMT with a synthetic version of an MAOI will come together and clinical people who have been certified by some sort of system that has nothing to do with shamanic wisdoms will give an individual the authority to administer this medicine, which means that a sacred shamanic ceremony with people that have trained their whole lives to be a safe facilitator are likely never to be legal, at least not in the context of a traditional legalization and regulation. Only in very sterile clinical sort of environments are medicines like this likely to be legalized. What is for many of us a much better track is the decriminalization movement. What decriminalization means is that medicines are decriminalized, not legal, but decriminalized for individual use. So psilocybin being decriminalized in places means that the government states a set amount that an individual can have legally in their possession for personal use. This still doesn't allow for the legalization or the, the freedom of shamanic ceremonies, but at least it gives individuals access to medicines on their own terms, not on the terms that the government regulates only. So these are the complexities we're facing. I'm just here to question is legalization really the right road if it doesn't actually give us freedom? It still makes our uh, destinies in the hands of clinical people, most of whom have never worked with the medicines they are administering or have very little working knowledge, especially around shamanic traditions of safety, spiritual protection, all of these things that we know are very real, but the Western medical world is still slow to adopt as actual truth. So we've got a long way to go to making these medicines accessible to people of all walks of life and especially to protect shamanic ceremonies as equal paths to healing. Um, so just planting the seed for all of you so that you continue to fight that good fight of not thinking legalization is actually a space of freedom. Um, and I wish it were. Thank you so much for listening. Please drop your comments. Um, I would love to hear your perspectives. If you haven't followed our channel, please do. We'll share content like this every week. See you soon. Much love.